Sports Talk Chicago. Amber Jones and Glorland, we are back and ready for today's special guest. He's a fantasy football expert for the NFL Network, a writer for NFL.com, and the host of the SICK podcast. Please welcome Adam Rack to the program. Adam, great to have you on. How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm thrilled to finally get closer to the game because I feel like this has been one of the weirdest weeks I've ever been a part of as a Bears fan, so I'm excited for it to be done with in a way. What made this week so weird? I don't know why our quarterback has to go out and apologize to everybody. Hey, sorry that he cares. Like you guys are, you guys are okay. Like it's he, I understand he could have probably phrased it a little bit better and it's not, he wasn't being the typical jock of like, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't Cutler in the bathroom being a don't care or anything like that. He does care. He wants to go out there and win football games. So I think everybody just needs to calm down. And as long as he goes out there and takes care of business against the Texans and all will be forgotten, then we can move forward. What do you make of that Bears Packers game when you watched it? A little disappointing. I thought that, you know, the opening sequence where they go out there and drive down for the touchdown where they're able to script the plays. I'm like, okay, this is really good. And I really enjoyed it. And I, I was a big fan of that. But unfortunately, you know, the second quarter kind of got away from them. Offensively, they couldn't get into a rhythm. You know, there was... You know, I think everybody's learning. You know, Luke Getze, this is his first season as a play caller. Like, okay, he's going to make some mistakes. But I went back and watched the All-22s, and you know what? He actually was calling a pretty good game. Like, I didn't think that it was – there were a couple of plays where I might have had a disagreement. But you know what? The coach has got to go out and do what he's got to do. There were times where Justin could have made some better decisions. And you know what? That's, that's part of the process of growing up in the NFL. And so, you know, it was okay. And I thought in the second half, too, you know, nobody was talking about this. They held the Packers to three points. And that was the second time that Matt Eberflus has done that. The last time he faced Aaron Rodgers as defensive coordinator of the Colts in 2020, he did the same thing. So for me, and this is what's given me a lot of hope going into this weekend, the Texans have been pretty good early on in games. And they got out to that 20 point lead against the Colts and they blew that. And, you know, they had their chances last week against Den or Seattle, Denver, Seattle, no, Denver. Russell Wilson is still confusing me. I can't figure it out. <laughs> but the thing of it is, it's like they've collapsed in the fourth quarter. And if anything, the Bears have played really well in the second half. You know, I thought that last week, you know, and again, this is credit to Luke Getze. When you're when the when a team is in nickel, even if you're losing, then why not? Why not go and run the ball if they're going to allow you to do that? It should have paid off in a touchdown if the referees call it correctly. And so, uh, and then if you know, and I, I know we're playing too much what if here. But if that touchdown is scored as it happened, you know, rightfully that it was, then that game's a lot different. And maybe Aaron Rodgers turns it up, but I'm like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not willing to concede that. I just feel like they make some pretty good second half adjustments. So I'm hopeful that they're going to keep that momentum going and that will end up being the difference in this week's game. Are you at all concerned about Justin Fields moving forward? I know a lot of people have broken down the film. There's been dissenting opinions all over Twitter. What do you make of the whole thing? Yeah, there's, a, there's way too many Twitter GMs and Twitter evaluators <laughs> who've gone through a lot of things, and it's, it's fine. And I don't know. I don't know what the coaches think in the, uh, you know, behind the scenes at Hallis Hall. I really do believe that they have a lot of faith in Justin Fields, and you really should. And there's a lot of nuance to learning this offensive system. You know, all you have to do is look at what's going on. What's going on with the Denver Broncos? Russell Wilson, one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history, is having a difficult time learning this system. And Nathaniel Hackett's system is the same system that Luke Getze is running. It all comes from this Shanahan coaching tree. And for Russell Wilson, it's been an adjustment, trying to get that quick rhythm passing going. And so if Russell Wilson is having trouble, I think we can afford our guy a little bit of a little bit of leeway. Like we don't like. I don't want to be obtuse to some of the mistakes that he's making. Like you cannot throw the ball past the line of scrimmage. That's bad. You missed a couple of throws. Equinemius St. Brown, I think being the one where he broke off his curl route and went down the field. Okay. Like if they learn from that, then that's fine. As long as he doesn't, you know, cross the line of scrimmage by three yards and throw the ball again, that's good. As long as he's starting to see some of these progressions and, and trusting himself a little bit, That'll be good. And remember, he was playing the 49ers, who were in the NFC Championship game last year, 
He was playing the Green Bay Packers, who were the number one seed last year. I think it's okay to give him a little bit of time. I think it would be it's it's way too soon to make any sort of judgment. Do you think this weekend could be a good bounce back opportunity for him taking on the Texans? Yeah, the Texans have really struggled, you know, especially well, both the run and the pass. And, you know, there's opportunities there. We saw, you know, we were we were talking about it on the sick podcast on Thursday. Of course, you could hear it on WCKG. 1530 on Fridays, you can, you can see that the Texans do a great job of stuffing the middle and it forces your running back to bounce it outside, which you're like, okay, David Montgomery has no problem doing that. That should help open up the pass. And I hope that what they're really working on this week is, is getting Justin just to kind of trust where everything is supposed to be. You can see it. There were some plays that were missed and he just needs to go and clean that up. I think uh, we did see, we did see Lucas Patrick working in at center uh, this week, which is nice. So hopefully, you know, we won't we won't be seeing our center get tossed immediately. So uh, I think there's there's an opera. This is a great chance to improve. And I'm not I'm not downplaying the Houston Texans. They played very well. This they could very well be two and zero right now. They played good enough to be two and zero. So don't think that it's a K walk. It's not a it's not a layup. It's not like being on the MTV challenge and you're like, okay, where's Veronica? I want to go. No, this is not a layup, but I think the bears still, the, the bears are good too. So we should go out there and be able to handle it. Adam Rank, you're on sports talk, Chicago. Adam, what's your confidence level in Brian Poles and Matt Eberflus at this point? Through the roof. I still love both of these guys. And I, when you're, when you're talking about those two, I think it's also important to throw in Ian Cunningham as well. Cause he's a part of this is, you know, of, the, of this whole process. And when you look at the best teams in the NFL, who are, who are some of the best organizations currently in the NFL? I would look at the Philadelphia Eagles and the, and the way they built a franchise. You know, the trust the process mantra was once tied to the Philadelphia 76ers, but now I think you can spread it out to their entire city, or at least to the Philadelphia Eagles, because their process has been phenomenal. I mean, they've done a great job of, of building an offensive line, surrounding their young quarterback with a lot of talent, well, Ian Cunningham had a big, big hand in a lot of that. Ryan Poles helped build the Kansas City Chiefs organization, one of the best organiza- organizations in football. They traded away Tyreek Hill during the offseason, and yet they're still one of the more prolific offenses in the league. And Matt Eberflus just is a football coach. Like I just, I just like his vibe. I think he's a good football coach. He says the right things. He's making adjustments at halftime. So for that part of it, I think the Bears are in very good hands. I think that hopefully, you know, these these players, I, I, there's probably still going to be a lot of turnover on this roster, but it does, and it, you know, looking back at what Seattle did when they grew their legion of boom defense and, and surrounded Russell Wilson that way, the Bears could kind of emulate that as well. So I'm, I'm very encouraged still. How do you feel about Poles' plan to, you know, lose this year, but next year with the big cap space, go out and spend some money and really rebuild this team? Well, I just think it's prudent to the way you spend your money is the way to go. Like, you know, everybody's been in a situation where you have a car that's on its last legs and, you know, the mechanic comes up. He's like, this thing needs a new transmission. And you're like, how many miles can I get? Like, how much? Like, I'm not changing the transmission. Okay. As long as it starts and sort of gets me to where I, I got to go, then that's all the money I'm in. I'm, in, I'm interested in putting into this automobile. The Bears have to be the same way. Like you want to win. You don't want to lose. You still want to evaluate your players. You still want to develop players. But at the same time, you don't want to go around throwing ungodly seams of money uh, at at various positions at guys who might not deserve it. Now, I know the one guy that we kind of knocked during the offseason was the Christian Kirk contract, uh, which actually hasn't looked terrible for the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. But at the same time, the Bears just weren't there. And I think that, again, if you go back to what the Eagles did, it would have been foolish for the Eagles to throw money around last season. They waited till the, to, to the right moment, brought in A.J. Brown. We've seen the Miami Dolphins do the same thing. you got to follow your schedule. And I think the Bears are still on a schedule right now, and so I'm into whatever. I, I'm into what they're doing. You mentioned the Eagles a couple of times. How similar is their path and where they are now to where the Bears could be in a couple of years? I think it's very similar. But again, to me, it all comes down to the offensive line. When you look at the Philadelphia Eagles right now, I would say most people would agree that if if that's not the best offensive line in football, it's top three. At the very least, it's top three. That's where the Bears need to be. Now, we have some promising pieces, 
Now we've really, we've really, I honestly like the, the player I've been impressed with the most is probably Tevin Jenkins. I think it's been a stroke of, of genius getting him at right guard. And I have no interest in moving him anywhere else. And that's a, that's another great thing about Twitter is that everybody's like, Oh, they should move him to right tackle. Like, no, 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 we're not going to get into it. We're not going to get into a thing where we're moving him all over the offensive line. He is going to be the right guard for a long time. Keep him there as long as he's healthy stays motivated, which it appears he is. He is a mauler. He has got such a great demeanor to be an offensive lineman. So, and if we get, you know, if we get Larry Borum and we get Braxton Jones to develop as well. And remember, you know, offensive linemen, you know, we were talking about this on the podcast today is that sometimes, you know, these offensive linemen, it takes them a couple of years to get acclimated. Fans are like, why aren't you acclimated now? You had all, you had all of training camp. You're like, no, no, no. It doesn't quite work that way. To me, I think the Bears could be there if this line develops over the course of the season. So I'm uh, I'm encouraged. And I and again, all the all the knocks that we're hearing against Justin Fields, and I know this because I play a lot of fantasy football. People felt the same way about Jalen Hurts. A lot of people thought that Jalen Hurts was a bum. They said he wasn't good. Philadelphia needs to draft a quarterback. Why aren't they drafting Zach Wilson or whoever? It wasn't Zach Wilson because they couldn't. Did they give up the well, whatever it was? The, the year that we were drafting all of our quarterbacks, when Fields went and Lawrence, or, like there were people who were convinced that the Eagles needed to give up on Jalen Hurts then and move in and go get Mac Jones or whomever or Trey Lance. Like I, I, I hope those people have deleted some of their tweets or their account or whatever because you look foolish now. And so that's why I asked Bears fans, just listen, like let him do his thing. Like we, 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 we saw it. We saw what he did at, at Ohio state. Like he's a good player, let him develop. And it's going to be all right. Where'd the patience go? I mean, people waited oh. to give Mitch Trubisky four years. And after two games, everyone's canceling Justin Fields already. Yeah. I really hate, and it's, and it's troubling to bring Mitch into this. Cause it's like this poor guy just trying to go out there and win games <laughs> I know. the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now it's like, like, well, what did Mitch do to get involved with this? I, I agree with you. I think that people are just, so frustrated. I, I, I blame Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert was so good immediately that everybody's like, why isn't our quarterback doing that? I'm like, you know what? That's a once in a generational talent. Like even Patrick Mahomes had to sit for the entirety of a season before he got his opportunity. I, I don't know. I got, maybe if the white Sox were better, like people would be like, oh, okay, that's fine. Like you look at some of these teams where it's like, oh, it's easy. It's easy to sit back and relax and let these guys like the, I know the giants are two and oh, and whatever, but it's like when the Yankees are and the Mets are good, then you're like, ah, everything's fine. It's it's no big deal. I think that if the White Sox and the Cubs were competitive, people would be like, you would be okay. But now, like everything's just everything's falling apart. Like it's just a bad time. And now low ball has got to go out there and have surgery. Like nothing's going right. The the Blackhawks are terrible. Like what is going on? Like the one thing that was supposed to be building was the Bears, and it's not quick enough. And so everybody's frustrated and they're upset. But if everybody would just take a step back, go down, go get a go get a slice of tavern style pizza, and it, everything's going to be all right. Where do you see this team going the rest of the season? Well, I think it's going to be I what I'm hopeful for. This probably goes against my my previous predictions, but I think that this team can be very good against teams like the Houston Texans. And by the way, I will say this as well. This is why I feel very confident about the Bears this weekend is that I know that you look at Green Bay and you're like, oh, familiar foe. That was the first time that Matt Eberflus was facing the Packers as the coach of the Chicago Bears. He has schemed against the Houston Texans twice a year for the last four years. So he knows this team. He knows the tendencies. Lovey Smith was the defensive coordinator there last year. So he's really familiar with the Houston Texans. These are the kind of games the Bears should win. I think what we're going to probably end up seeing is the Bears winning games like this. Hey, you go out, you beat the Houston Texans. You go to New York the following week. The Giants are a little bit better than people thought. But again, there's also a hope. Like, what if the Giants, if the Giants win on Monday? Like, I'm root, we should all be rooting for the Giants to win on Monday night. Beat the Dallas Cowboys and be full of yourselves and be 3-0. and Because I don't think, the Giants don't look like a 4-0 and team to me. If the Giants lose, I'm going to be very morose. I'm going to be like, oh, they're going to bounce back. But you know what, win those games that you should win, and then when you go up against teams like the Green Bay Packers, especially on the road, 
might not go our way, but I think we should be competitive. I want to see better tackling. I want to see a little bit more urgency at times, but I'm still very confident that this team will be, they'll be middle of the pack, which is fine. Adam Brank still here on Sports Talk Chicago. Adam, a few more questions before we finish up. First off, the sick podcast. How's it been going? Uh, it's a lot of fun. You know what? We've, uh, we're, we're starting to hit a groove. You know, we, we lost it last year during the playoffs, which the Bears were not a part of. And so you were kind of like, you know, kind of going in circles. Now that we have actual things to talk about, it's been a lot of fun. We do a Tuesday night show called Take It to the Rank. Carmen Vitali and I, she's my co-host on that show. And then every Thursday, we preview the upcoming games. We usually try to get at least one rival in there, you know, somebody who covers the team that we're playing. And then uh, we do a little fantasy thing too. So uh, it's been cool. So, and we appreciate, you know, being on AM 1530 WCKG, part of a two hour cover two of Bears talk. Cause I love, I, by the way, I love leading into Olin Krutz, you know, and uh, we were excited that he was nominated, one of, the, uh, one of the nominees for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Really deserved and uh, love listening to him and Jason. So it's a, it's honored. It's an honor to be a part of that, that whole situation. He's a hall of famer, right? Don't you think? I would think so. I mean, I if you're comparing so. them, I mean, like it's always different because like, you know, is he the same as, you know, Tom Brady? You're like, well, that's different. Like compared to other players who paid his position, like who is better than Olin Krutz during his time? Kevin Mawai is in the hall of fame. I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I'm taking him over Olin Krutz. I think he's very underrated. Adam, before we finish up today, too, last question. What's the best Bears memory you have as a fan? Oh, I mean, like, I remember mostly how excited my dad was with the, uh, the, 85, the 85 Super Bowl. You know what it was? Oh, I'll tell you what it is. This is it. This is, if you've heard me on other shows, I might have said other things. But this one finally just... It came to mind. I'll never forget the look on my dad's face on Christmas morning in 1985 when he opened up his present, which was a Bears starter jacket. You know, the old, the old school 81s. I was a little kid. And uh, my dad, who is very stoic, like retired, he was a Navy guy and uh, really just was so excited. He had this Bears jacket. It was his pride and joy. And, uh, I think that was it. That was like, ah, oh, like this team obviously means a lot to him. Um, so that was pretty cool. Obviously, you know, like the winning and everything like that. I think for me too, my dad has since passed on. Uh, my daughter's first Thanksgiving was also the Cutler beats the Packers in like Brett Favre retirement night. And then with everything that's going on with Brett Favre retirement night, I'm, I'm even more excited that we were, uh, we were able to be victorious that evening. So that is a, a game wise, that might be the one, but I think as a moment in time, uh, my dad opening that starter jacket would be it, which I still have, by the way. And I break it out every once in a while. When the Bears need it, I break it out. I actually was wearing it during uh, the Super Bowl. And um, somebody, because I was now of age when uh, Devin Hester returned that kickoff, and uh, the thing got soaked in beer because somebody tipped the table. <laughs> and uh, things have, well, you know, like that, there's nothing more Chicago than that. So it is, uh, but that jacket, man, yeah, it's, it's been special. Next time you come on, you should break it out and wear it. Love to see it. How I got to. Yeah, yeah gonna absolutely. Have to. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I love that thing. And it's got the old, like you can tell, like when people walk around, they have starter jackets. When you see the patch on the side, now the reprints that they do, like starter still sells these jackets. The reprints have the current, NFL shield. So if you're ever going to buy one on eBay or Etsy or Poshmark or anything like that, check the shield patch and make sure it's got the 28, the 28 stars is the legitimate, but make sure it has all the big stars and all the, the way the L is shaped. You can tell what's authentic and what's not, or what's a reprint and what's, what's, what's truly vintage. Expert shopping advice there from Adam Rank. Really appreciate That's the actually what that, that brings in my mother. My mother was like an excellent shopper too. She was at the, uh, we, what was it? Is it the, is it the Westfield that's off golf road in Schaumburg? Yeah. Like, I swear to God, I grew up there. Like that's the one, like <laughs> I, I, I can see that thing. I can close my eyes and visualize that. So, uh, or that one. And there's also one up in, I think it was wheeling. That's also another one. When we were really stepping out, we would drive up. Is it wheeling wheeler wheeling wheeler? I don't know. I forget my towns now. 
It's been so living out here on the West Coast. I forget. I was out in Lake Forest this uh, this summer, and it was great to be back there. You're like, oh yeah, I remember all these towns. I remember these malls. I remember these these little tavern style pizza places. Yeah, it's it's, it's awesome. I appreciate the time, Adam, as always. Best wishes, of course, with the Sick Podcast NFL Network, and looking forward to catching up again real soon. All right. Thank you, Johnny Z, and uh, we'll see you soon in Bear Down.